Since sodium ion batteries are expected to contain none of the critical elements such as lithium and cobalt, and a lot of manufacturers claim that they can be manufactured on existing lithium ion battery plants, does this mean that we can expect it to be easily scaled up and available in no time? Or could some of the bottlenecks that apply to lithium ion batteries also apply to sodium ion batteries? Precisely, one of the main bottlenecks for lithium ion batteries is nickel, and so far, Cattles such as NMC and NCA are proven to be the only true option for a long-range electric vehicle, which means that sodium ion battery cattles which contain nickel can be expected to deliver high gravimetric energy density. However, when we consider the abundance of elements in the Earth's crust, nickel along with cobalt is not abundant, hence why these two are amongst the critical minerals. To this end, is it reasonable to say that since lithium is approximately 10 times more abundant than nickel, developing a lithium-based cathode such as LFP will be a more sustainable approach than developing a nickel, cobalt or tin based sodium ion battery cathode or anode will the use of such critical minerals in the development of sodium ion battery contradict the whole point of having a sodium ion battery since reduced cost and increased sustainable scalability are the key selling points for a sodium ion battery system could the use of nickel containing cathode materials for sodium ion battery limit its global scaling potential since catl's pushing wide sodium ion battery cathode does not contain any nickel or cobalt but will contain elements such as manganese and or iron, which are abundant, does this suggest that sodium ion battery chemistry will be easier to sustainably scale up without any issues for several years to come? And is the energy density trade-off worth it since nickel containing layered oxide cathode materials offer higher energy density than Prussian blue or Prussian white cathode materials? These are some of the questions we will discuss and hopefully answer on this episode of The Electrochemist. Hello friends and welcome to the channel. On this channel, we discuss all things battery development, including existing batteries, new and emerging battery systems, battery supply chain, battery production, and battery application. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel, smash the like button, and keep watching. The decline of the subsidy policy, the rise in the price of upstream metal raw materials, and the increase in the demand for EVs have promoted the development of cost-reducing and efficiency-enhancing technologies. Sodium ion batteries have been identified as one of such cost efficient, safer, and sustainable rechargeable battery systems. Because sodium is the sixth most abundant element in the earth crust, the precursor, sodium carbonate, is significantly cheaper than that of lithium, lithium carbonate, thereby giving sodium ion batteries a cheaper bill of material to lithium ion batteries. Additionally, the use of aluminum current collectors at the anode and cathode electrodes of sodium ion batteries makes it possible to discharge them to as low as zero volts, which makes them safer for transport when compared to other battery systems. The ability to use less flammable carbonate electrolyte solvents like polyethylene carbonate means that sodium ion batteries are also able to operate at low prone to fire. While all these sounds interesting, innovations must be truly scalable and cost effective. It is often easy to do a simple materials cost or bill of materials analysis and make a conclusion that one cell is cheaper than the other one. But lab scale or pilot scale productions are just the beginning. What really counts is to have a manufacturing process that not only increases performance, but more importantly reduces cost, that is capex cost and variable cost and risk while also increasing quality and safety. Although the first principle advantage of sodium ion batteries is clear to see from a safety and availability point of view. Supply chain is key, and this considers every part of the cell. The supply chain of sodium ion batteries is relatively reasonable when we compare it to that of lithium ion batteries with respect to the choice of materials that are used for producing the cell. Or is it? The materials cost and performance of sodium ion battery chemistries vary depending on the choice of materials used and their abundance, sustainable production. The fact that the choice of materials used, the fact that the performance of sodium ion batteries is almost double that of lithium ion batteries means that more materials will be required to develop a sodium ion battery that delivers equal performance to that of lithium ion batteries. Most mainstream sodium ion battery cathode material companies focus on three cathode material types, namely layered transition metal oxide, Prussian blue and Prussian white analogs, and polyanionic compounds. Today, all three categories of sodium ion battery cathodes are produced by most battery companies and catalyst producing companies, either in-house or under a license. In terms of the anode material, most people are using hard carbon, with a handful of them using soft carbon as the anode. And there are at least two to three large commercial companies producing hard carbon. 
hard carbon was originally manufactured for lithium ion batteries, but because the hard carbon that will be used for sodium ion batteries require different morphology and material properties from the requirements of a hard carbon for lithium ion batteries, most sodium ion battery manufacturers are developing their own proprietary method for producing hard carbon carbon materials. Titanates and alloys such as tin, phosphorus, and so on can also be used as the anode materials in sodium ion batteries. When it comes to the electrolytes, most sodium ion batteries use a sodium hexafluorophosphate or NAPF6 salt dissolved in cyclic aliphatic carbonate solvents such as ethylene, diethylene, and polypropylene carbonates. These are currently, there are only currently two or three global suppliers of battery grade NAPF6. This means more manufacturers are needed for this sort. NAPF, NAPF6 is manufactured through a complicated and expensive process that involves the use of toxic and flammable fluoride compounds such as hydrogen fluoride. Although there are alternative sodium-based electrolytes such as sodium trifluoromethane sulfonamide or NATFSI and sodium bisfluoromethane sulfonamide or NAFSI, these salts are cathode-specific, which means that they can't be used for all cathode types. For example, when used with high-voltage layered oxide cathodes, these electrolytes can dissolve or corrode the aluminum current collector, which will be very dangerous. For all other components of the sodium ion battery, such as the aluminum foil, the binders, the aluminum battery tabs, and cell casings, all these other components can be sourced globally from suppliers already supplying components for lithium ion batteries. So we can assume that these ones are not going to be a major problem. But from a cell perspective, let's look at all the components. For the cathode choices, the first one is Prussian blue, Prussian white analogs, or PBAs and PWAs. And several companies such as Natron Energy, Altris, and CATL are developing these materials for sodium ion batteries. When used as cathode materials for sodium ion batteries, PBAs and PWAs can deliver high power density, good cycle life, moderate gravimetric energy density. They can be synthesized at low temperature and are often low cost to manufacture when they are based on iron and manganese. These characteristics also mean that PBAs and PWAs are not suitable for high energy applications, such as mobile and electric vehicle applications, because they generally have a low tap and true density, which means that they can be used to make high area capacity electrodes, and this is a requirement for high energy density cells. This means that this class of cathode materials are relegated to power applications. Similarly, the second class of cathode materials, which are polyanionic compounds, are cathode materials that are very suitable for high power applications and not high energy applications. The widely used form of this compound are Na3V2PO4 and NaFePO4, which is an analog of LFP, which is used in lithium ion batteries. They also contain some elements such as vanadium, which can be considered toxic and high cost because of their limited availability, but they are stable in air, which makes them easy to handle, and they have similar properties in performance to PBAs and PWAs. The presence of phosphates in these materials mean that they have low tap density, which limits their prospect for high energy applications. When it comes to sodium ion battery cathodes for high energy applications, the only viable alternative is transition metal layered oxides. Although these materials are sensitive to ambient conditions, which makes them a bit difficult to handle, they exhibit high tap density, which means they can provide electrodes with high area capacity for higher reversible capacities, higher gravimetric energy density, and they deliver good cycle life. These materials often contain transition metals, and they can be designed as O3, P2, P3, and mixed phase type materials, which means that they have diverse and unique electronic and, electronic and, and, and electrochemical properties. Companies such as Floridian, Heiner Battery, and CATL use such layered oxide materials as cathodes for their sodium ion batteries. Now, looking at the supply chain and potential constraints, Let's consider each component of the sodium ion battery cell. For the anode production, to scale up a sodium ion battery production plant, you would need a hard carbon material production factory to successfully scale up the production of current sodium ion battery architectures. Hard carbon anodes can be derived from a dozen sources, which means that at least as many potential outputs and manufacturing processes exist, optimizing this large scale hard carbon production process to meet the demand for sodium ion batteries will require a lot of highly skilled engineers and several iterations. Also, contrary to what is paraded in the media by some companies about producing hard carbon from agricultural or biomass and other types of waste, the best performing hard carbon and soft carbon anode materials 
are currently produced from fossil fuels such as coal and petroleum pitch. So it is not as clean, safe, and sustainable as claimed by most companies and the media. As it relates to the cathode electrode, they are usually sodium containing materials, so they require high purity sodium carbonate as a precursor to make them. This is the first challenge because all the sodium in the earth crust is not ultra high purity, which means a lot of energy and resource will be required to process the sodium to ultra high purity, and this will require specialized refineries. The next step to producing the sodium ion battery cathode involves processing this sodium along with other elements depending on the cathode chemistry to achieve the ideal cathode material. Sodium ion battery cathodes are often sensitive to moisture, which creates a significant challenge, not only during the cell production process, but also throughout the supply chain pathway as it relates to material and cell quality control. So you can see the challenges there. Now, a very common buzzword in the media and by a lot of battery companies is the energy density. What is the energy density? Now, the energy density of batteries can be displayed in two different ways, the gravimetric energy density and the volumetric energy density. The gravimetric energy density refers to the amount of energy that can be stored per weight unit, which means the higher it is, the lighter the battery pack of the battery can be. While the volumetric energy density refers to the amount of energy that can be contained within a volume, so the higher the volumetric energy density, the smaller the battery pack, which means the longer the range of the electric vehicle if the battery is being used for mobile applications, which is the largest market for batteries today. Now, by definition, Increasing the cell output voltage or the nominal voltage is an effective way to increase the energy density of the battery because the choice of cathode materials with a particular chemistry depends on various factors, including the cell voltage, the capacity, the energy and power capabilities, the cycle life and temperature of operation. This is why the type of cathode material used for sodium ion battery dictates its performance and its supply chain constraints. Like in lithium ion batteries, cathode materials that contain nickel like NMC and NCA often deliver higher energy densities. So with respect to layered oxides, this is why they are preferred choice for high energy applications and companies like Faradion and possibly CATL will be using them as cathode materials for their sodium ion batteries. On the other hand, when it comes to volumetric energy density, a lot of sodium ion battery companies do not give this information out. The amount of energy that can fit into each physical volume is most important for applications that are volume constrained, where speed matters, and this is regarded as the volumetric energy density. Now, consumer electronics and passenger vehicles are two good examples of this. Since there is a limit to how large you can make the vehicles so that they can accommodate more batteries, the battery cells themselves need to pack more energy into the available space. So although weight is also important for electric vehicles, better volumetric energy density is a bigger priority for mobile applications. This is one of the reasons most of the sodium ion battery companies do not announce their volumetric energy density. Because as you can see in the table displayed here, most of these companies have low volumetric energy density when compared to LFP lithium ion batteries, which have a volumetric energy density of about 400 watt hours per liter. So how can sodium ion batteries increase their volumetric energy density? Well, the answer is reducing the volume of the cell, which is related to its mass. But since the cathode determines majority of the electrochemical properties of the cell, there is little or no wiggle room on this. So we have to turn to the anode material. Most of the companies making sodium ion batteries use hard carbon material as the anode. Hard carbon itself is just like graphene. It's carbon. It's a very light, fluffy, less dense material which means you would need a large quantity of this material to make an electrode, as you can see in this image. Alternatively, if you use a denser, high-capacity material like an alloy, such as tin, bismuth, antimony, ETC, these materials are denser than carbon. And more importantly, they have a superior sodium storage capacity to hard carbon, which means that these cells made with these materials could deliver a higher volumetric energy density and higher gravimetric energy density. And as you can see in the table, there's a company that is already using a tin sodium alloy as their anode material for sodium ion batteries. And they are able to achieve this high volumetric energy density, but they are still in the pilot scale. So we won't go into talking about them. Using such metal alloy materials as anode 
materials for sodium ion batteries come with their own challenges because they are similar to silicon in lithium ion batteries in that they experience large volume expansion and they have some other challenges with operating them and using them in the industry. But the other uh, issue with them is also their cost, uh, as you can see in terms of availability. And that explains why a lot of companies do not use them for their sales. But I believe that companies using hard carbon as their anode material will certainly increase their volumetric density significantly in a few years because if you look at lithium ion batteries it took a few years for it to get to that level it is expected that with big players like catl on board the sodium ion battery development the supply chain bottlenecks will be resolved over time but you can see catl plan to have their sodium ion battery supply chain set up by 2023 but we still haven't seen their sales delivered to clients and oems yet so it shows you how difficult and how complicated this whole process is in that it will require lots of resources and incredible engineering for it to be achieved despite all these potential challenges of sodium ion battery i believe that we cannot achieve energy transition with lithium ion batteries alone and the fundamental benefits of a sodium ion battery is still a great selling point that makes it an attractive proposition so i would say that you know i see that it's possible for sodium ion batteries to be scaled up in a very very um quick rate but it will take time and it will take a lot of work i would like to know your thoughts on what we've discussed so far so please drop us a comment in the comment section if you've enjoyed this video please show us your support by liking subscribing to this channel to really help us grow um, i appreciate you for taking time to watch the video thank you and i'll see you in the next video bye